Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the podcast, Smart Man, Smarter Woman, a podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. And thank you very much for giving us a listen today. I am Steve Lotz. And I am Juliette Aurora. And we are your co-hosts. And before we get uh, started with today's episode, uh, let's hear a couple of words from my wonderful co-host, that smarter woman herself, Juliet. How are you doing today, Juliet? What's new and exciting over there? I am excellent, thank you. It's actually, I was reminded this morning while I was out for my walk, and it was a brisk, cold, windy walk, why I need to retire in the Caribbean somewhere so that my morning walks <laughs> are on the beach, in this, my feet are in the sand, and I have some sun. So I'm, I'm planning my retirement is what I'm doing today. Awesome. Well, well, I must say, I, I certainly would not argue with being retired in the Caribbean or anywhere near a, a beach that you can actually walk on in January and February. That would be sort of a novel idea for ourselves since we uh, live here in the wonderful great white north of Canada. So that would be awesome. So thank you for that. Uh, so let's bring our guest, today's guest, into the show, who is an entrepreneur himself. And so I'm really excited to uh, get into our discussion. Uh, his name is Dylan Ogline, and he comes to us today all the way from sunny Florida, Orlando. At least I presume it's sunny. I'm sure Dylan will let us know if it's not. And why don't we start off a little bit, Dylan? Anyway, welcome to the show. Absolutely, Steve. Thanks for having me here. And maybe let's just start off if you could tell us a little bit about uh, your own entrepreneurial journey, how you got to where you are today, and uh, what you do and how you help people. Sure, sure. Uh, so I will start off by saying it is it is a little cloudy here in Florida, but it, it's like 70 degrees. So I, I can't complain. I do, so I do live in Orlando, and uh, I think it's like, the quickest I could get to the beach is like in an hour. So I don't take my morning walk on the beach, but, uh, you know, in the middle of winter for you guys up there, it's, uh, it's, it's not that bad here. So, so yeah, uh, my entrepreneurial journey, that's weird thinking of it that way, but I'll try to keep this short. So I started my first business when I was 14. I'm 31 now. So I have 17 years of experience, which makes me feel, feel kind of slightly old. <laughs> <laughs> when I say it that way. But yeah, started my first business selling cell phones when I was 14, selling them on uh, on eBay. I somehow ended up with a like a wholesaler's license in Europe somehow. <laughs> so I applied for it and they somehow approved me. So I, I was working with this wholesaler. I could get cell phones, ship them to the United States and, and flip them and make like 50 to 100 bucks each. That lasted for about a year until... My merchant account got shut down because they found out I was under the age of 18 and that was not allowed. <laughs> so I couldn't accept payments anymore. So that, that put an end to that. But when I started, this was 2003, 2004, around that time. This was the infancy of things like Google AdWords. I don't even know if it, if it was called, what it was called at the time, but like Google Ads at the time was just, rocking the world. It was completely game changing. I was also, you know, I built my first website at that time. And so I, I, I got into, you know, kind of tech at the, at the right time, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't all, you know, puppies and sunshine. Uh, so after that business got shut down, I had dropped out of high school and spent the next 12 years bouncing around, chasing the shiniest object <laughs> that I could possibly find not getting really anywhere. And then finally, in uh, towards the end of 2016, I had a conversation with a long-term mentor of mine and just scrapped everything except for my digital agency work, uh, you know, building websites, building logos, things like that. And then I slimmed down and scrapped all my offerings. So I was just doing digital marketing management uh, or in English, I was just managing my clients, Facebook, Google ads, things like that. At the time I was maybe making 50,000 a year. My goal was six figures. I wanted to get to six figures so bad. <laughs> and 2017 hit multiple six figures. And then 2018 finally hit seven figures or yeah, seven figures. So yeah, now once I hit the kind of the financial goals, I've, I've shifted over the past two years or so to 
helping other people start their own businesses. I still have my agency, but now I have a training program where I teach people how to start their own digital marketing agency. And it's, you know, it's, it's definitely a shift for me, but it's, it's much more fulfilling. So did I do that in like under 90 seconds? I think I tried uh, to speed I, it up. I, I actually wasn't timing you, but I, or timing me. I thought I saw you had the, the stopwatch there. So no, my bad. No, I, just, I don't think it was under 90 seconds, but. Um, oh, really? You know, but it was all good. And I, I do always love it when, you know, we're chatting with a guest who is from a little sunnier climate than we have and they always have to share the damn temperature yeah. and we never asked we never said i mean i know i, I could i'm pretty yeah. sure you did are you sure you didn't ask for it <laughs> okay we'll have to play this back folks and see if i actually did we'll ask have to check the check the transcript on that one <laughs> anyway that's awesome so I, I do have to ask, so so you've now made the transition where you are spending your time helping others mm -hmm. start a business. I presume it's a digital agency, is it, that Correct. you're helping? Yeah. Okay. Yes. What do you love about doing that? Like what, what made you make that transition from actually doing it to, no, I want to help other people learn how to do it? So when I was, uh, it goes back to, to the very beginning, uh, when I was you know, 13, 14, uh, when I started my first business, at the time, I was starting to think like, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Like, what do I want to go to college for? What do I want to do? And uh, I, I was a hockey player. So I had uh, coaches who were just a massive impact on my life. I had teachers that were a massive impact on my life. Like in my mind, I was like, oh, maybe maybe I could be a, a coach or a teacher or something like that. However, <laughs> uh, I grew up, you know, from a very poor town, middle income family from a very poor town. I didn't want to be poor. I, I mean, for lack of a better way of putting it, that I that was just what drove me. And I looked at like teachers as an example, and they were really struggling. I looked at hockey coaches and most of the time like you're literally paying out of your own pocket to be a you know an amateur hockey coach so that wasn't going to work but i had influences in my life from from other people read the right books at the right time and i was like well maybe, maybe i could do this business thing i didn't have a plan for i can do the business thing and then maybe become a teacher or a coach i, I didn't know what it would look like but i was like business is my best way out so that desire to be a coach or a teacher in some aspect has been there for a very long time. And then once I built the business to a point where I was like, oh, you know, I'm comfortable now. I have the lifestyle I want. Then it was like, well, what's the next challenge? Uh, and that's when I decided to focus on the consulting teaching business. Hmm. So in, when you initially started telling us about your entrepreneurial journey, you, know, mm -hmm. you talked about when you were 14 and you started a business, which I think is amazing. And then you kind of jumped over the 12 years of bouncing around. So I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna take you back to those 12 years of bouncing around. Sure. Only because I'm sure that there are so many people in our audience that listen or that are listening that actually have encountered that same thing. You know, maybe they weren't 14 when they started their business, they were 25. And a lot of business owners feel that, okay, I'm starting this business and they stick with it even when they, they hate it. It's not getting them the lifestyle they want and they never move on to that next thing. So if you could share a little bit, not necessarily of what you bounced around, but why you felt that it was okay to, to give up this and move on to the next thing and move on to the next thing. It might help so our Sure, sure. So for me, I think I'm my situation was a little bit more unique than I think the average person. I like right now, you know, I have my my digital agency. It wasn't that it took me 12 years to build that. It was I never really focused on one single business. And and I see that's that's more common with millennials, I think, where you're you're chasing the shiniest object. And it's Part of it is because we're bombarded by all these different ideas and whatnot, but also it was desperation. Yeah, it was like in my mind at the time, I was like, oh, 
you know, this, this idea that I'm working on, if I can get that idea to just make a thousand dollars a month, I know I'm not going to change the world with it. I know I'm not going to make six figures with it, but if I can just get that extra thousand dollars, then I can focus on this, this other business that I want to focus on. And if I can get that one to make a couple thousand dollars a month, then I can focus on this other thing. And it was just constantly, I, I look back on it and like I was working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, every single week on, I have absolutely no idea what, <laughs> just everything needed to be perfect. And I would spend a year building out a website for something, making sure it had a nice logo, building out the YouTube channel, the LinkedIn profile, all this fake stuff that doesn't really matter, that's not actually ringing the cash register, not actually doing anything. And then I would go to actually get real customers and find out that nobody actually wanted it. Okay. Can't tell you how many times I did that. So for me, it, was, it wasn't grinding away on the same business. It was, it was, I was making a millimeter in progress, a millimeter of progress in 20 different directions. And it wasn't until I scrapped everything and just focused on one thing that I was actually able to start to make really good progress. For, for those of you out there who, who are listening to this and you're thinking like this you know, relates to me or like, man, I know what this feels like. Read the book Essentialism. I don't know who it's by. I'm terrible with remembering author names. Greg, but Greg McEwen. Yes. Thank you very much. That book, like that's probably like, like top three business Bible books to me. Like it is absolutely transformed my mind and, and it really hit home the idea of you, you need to just focus on the essential, what is it, the critical few and let go of the trivial many. Yeah, absolutely. Does that answer your question of those 12 years? <laughs> no, it absolutely does. And I think that will that it will be very helpful for a lot of our audience because we have you know a lot of millennials who do listen to us and I'm sure that they can relate. So the focus, focusing on one thing, and, and we see that as well, you know, our daughter, I mean, is she a millennial? I don't think she is. I think she's still too young to be a millennial, but there's a lot of jumping around, you know, I want to do this and I want to do this. And so many grand plans that I think it is very similar. A little bit of progress across 15 things isn't really moving you forward to mm -hmm. accomplish yeah. what you, what you want to accomplish because you're not moving forward far enough in any of the areas. So I, I do appreciate that. I also think it, it has a lot to do with the number of options too. It's it, like, say you say you're, even if you're sitting there, you're like, oh, I'm only focusing on, on, on one business, right? There's still like 20 different options or directions you can go with to try to get the business to, to grow or to take your business to the next level. 20 different marketing channels, 20 different, you know, you could be doing, you know, YouTube videos, you could be doing a podcast, you could be writing content, you could be doing this or that or this and that. And it's really tough to figure out, you're more tempted to just say, I can do it all. Uh, and then you just do a crappy job at all of them, instead of just focusing on one single option and getting really good at it, and honing your skill, honing your talent, and becoming, you know, one of the best at that. And uh, I think it's just, it, I, most of it is just, there's so many options available, which is, it's a good thing, but it, you know, it's a, it's a catch 22, as they say, you know, definitely. It, uh, there's definitely there's advantages, but there's a lot of disadvantages as well. Yeah. Well, I know when Steve first started his first business and, and he built a website, there was, you know, I mean, he was probably one of the first music stores that had a website where you were selling online. Whereas mm -hmm. now there is, you know, that's just, okay, you're opening a retail store, well, you need an online presence. So you also then also have to try and market that across all these channels. And when Steve, you know, when you had your store, I don't think you had any of those channels. It was basically, you know, Google AdWords were pretty much it. I don't think there were all these other options yeah. for business owners to sift through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And I, and I think I, the one comment I would make also is that I'm, I don't believe that that situation or that mindset is unique to millennials. I think what it is unique to is 
there's a, an entrepreneurial spirit in some of us <laughs> that is not in all of us. We will continue with our conversation right after this message from a friend of the show. AIS Solutions is an award-winning cloud accounting firm serving small business all across Canada. If you want to migrate to a powerful and effective paperless accounting system and get your financials wherever you are, whenever you want them, then contact AIS Solutions team of trained professionals today at www.aissolutions.ca. And now, back to our conversation. And that's why not everybody is an entrepreneur, nor do they want to be an entrepreneur. And that's perfectly fine. But I think those of us that do have that little entrepreneurial spirit in the back of our head, and it could be probably described differently than Lunacy. spirit. There's probably lots of other words that would match it as well. But we're always seeking, we're always trying to find something Sometimes we're motivated by money. Sometimes we're motivated by passion. Sometimes we're, you know, we're, we're always looking at, you know, I mean, shiny ball syndrome. I am absolutely guilty. I suffer. For, I still suffer from it. So full disclosure, I'm not sure you grow out of it. I still see things and I go, geez, you know, I, I think we could do something with that. And now as I'm older and I like to think a little wiser, I do catch myself a little better than I used to. So I do put the reins on a little easier, but I still see them and I still am drawn to that shiny ball. So I think, Dylan, I think at a very young age, you obviously demonstrated <laughs> you had an entrepreneurial spirit and so I would uh, perhaps suggest that uh, when you were going through the, the wilderness for those 12 years or whatever, you were just being an entrepreneur. You were trying to figure stuff out. Uh, it, and I, I also think it, it, most entrepreneurs that I meet, they're not, they're not afraid to work. So it's almost this, you're, you're like, but I'm working hard. So like this, of course it's going to work because I'm putting in the work. So you're tempted to think that I can make this business grow or I can make these 10 businesses grow with just brute force. And, and there's a lot to be said about how important that work ethic and commitment and, and, and all of that is. But for me, what I learned was that it had to do with you never get good at anything. You're just okay at a, a lot of times you're subpar at a lot of things. Whereas the best way to move the needle to actually make money, to grow your business and to grow your passion is to get really good at something. And you can't get really good at a lot of things. Uh, it's better to be a, a master at just one or two critical things. And, and that, that makes it a lot easier to to move the needle in the right direction. Great advice. Yeah, that no, sure. that that is uh, great advice and something something I think that some people never learn. Some people learn at a younger age, some at a older age, but uh, that is absolutely the truth. What is it? What's that saying? Master of none. That. Guys ja ja or we talk about the jack of all trades, master of master none. Master of none, yeah. that's right. And, and that absolutely yeah, that's bad. applies. Uh, thank you for rescuing me on that one, Dylan. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was in the wilderness myself there for a few seconds. Yeah. You need somebody to steer you in the right direction there. <laughs> so can you, can you tell us that when you decided to focus on the digital agency side, mm -hmm. out of all the businesses that you were trying to run and trying to get off the ground, what made you what made you decide that out of the the five or ten businesses that you were projects that you were pursuing that that was the one that you needed to follow and drop all the others it's it's a very good question so the, the advice i got from so as i mentioned i had a conversation with a long term mentor and and basically it was he's like well, what do you want what what do you, what do you do in this for what are you in business for and i was like i mean you know, I've talked to you before. I don't want to be poor. Like I, <laughs> I've described this before. Like 
I just want to be able to turn the heat on <laughs> whenever I'm cold. Because <laughs> I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, an old house, very little heat and very little insulation. So like I remember freezing during those winters. So I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want a Ferrari. I just want to be able to turn the heat on. Right. So it's like I, I want to be able to, you know, turn the heat on whenever I want, have a little bit of financial freedom. And also lifestyle was, was incredibly important to me as well. So I was influenced by uh, Tim Ferriss, The 4-Hour Workweek. Highly recommend that book to everybody. But I, I didn't want to work a thousand hours you know, a week. <laughs> I actually wanted to have a life. I wanted to do things that I was passionate about, maybe outside of work wanted to travel and things like that. So, so for me, it was like, that's what I'm doing this for. And he's like, okay, like, well, you definitely need to focus. But he said to me, and his, this isn't very good. Like it, it doesn't sound good, but he says, you need to stop trying to build an airline and instead drill for oil. The lesson was you need to focus on a high margin business, something where if you end up being, so he's like, you, you know, your goal is six figures, right? So you want to, aim for a business where if you just end up being okay at it in this in this uh, example the drilling for oil like you don't have to be the best in the world at drilling for oil but you could probably make a lot of money in that industry if you're just okay at it like the airline industry the best in the world get into that business and they still get slaughtered and they lose money so it's like you you know you're probably not going to be the best in the world at anything so you want to aim for something where you can hit your financial goal and your lifestyle goal. And if you're just okay, you can still hit those things. So again, the, the in, in English, what the lesson was, focus on a high profit margin business. Uh, so I looked at the, the, you know, the things that I was, that all these different projects and things that I was working on. And the one that, uh, I could maintain the lifestyle that I wanted or get the lifestyle that I wanted and was high profit margin was digital marketing management services. We charge our clients 10% of whatever we manage and typically like the amount of work required once we figure out profitable marketing campaigns for them, the amount of work required goes down as their expenditures go up. So we make more from them and the amount of work that we go that we do goes down and their satisfaction goes up too it's it is the perfect it was just so happened to be the perfect combination for me excellent thank you for sharing that yeah sure no that's uh, I, I love that analogy I, i've never heard that one before about uh, not building an airline but drilling <laughs> yeah it, it doesn't it's not it's not sexy sounding but that that was what he said to me and and it just stuck with me and literally that night i remember that the house the house i lived in there was a long sidewalk in the front and it was it was a, an epiphany moment for me i remember walking the sidewalk when he said those words to me it was cold it was dark at night and I, you know, had the conversation hung up. I went downstairs into my freezing basement office and just delete, delete. You know, I grabbed the folder, deleted. I was so, I had reached the point of just exhaustion, not physical, but mentally just, I was so exhausted. I put in all these years and got nowhere. So it was very easy for me to quit cold turkey <laughs> and just ruthlessly focus on one single thing. That's great. You've mentioned the the, the mentor a couple of times in, in the short time we've been together. How important do you think it is uh, for an entrepreneur to seek out a mentor? Uh, this is a fantastic question. It is mission critical. The feedback that I get from a lot of people, though, is like, well, I don't know anybody. That's okay. <laughs> Your mentors don't need to be people that you've ever actually met. Now, if you if you have somebody, if you're lucky enough, then you have somebody in your personal life, maybe a family member or a friend or something who can mentor you. That is awesome. Like that's fantastic. But if you don't, that is 100% okay. You can read books. I, I know listeners can't see me, but I'm surrounded by a bookshelf. Uh, <laughs> I read a lot. The person also doesn't even need to be alive. Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin, 
FDR. These are people, I know I just named presidents, of course, but, or no, I guess <laughs> Franklin's not, but I named political figures, but, but those people are mentors of mine. I've read books, I've read teachings from them, uh, from those people. Tim Ferriss, I've never met Tim Ferriss, but he has had a massive impact on my life. Robert Kiyosaki, the writer of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, another book that I highly recommend. Never met the dude, but he has been a mentor to me when it comes to finances and money and thinking about business. So uh, I'm, I'm really passionate about this because I, I really feel a lot of people, if you're feeling alone, like it is critical, like, like I said, mission critical for you to seek out mentors. And uh, one other thing I would mention is try to keep it condensed. You don't want, especially because there's so many options out there. There's so many podcasts to listen to. There's so many books to read. You can feel like you're going in so many different directions. I highly recommend pick one or two people in a certain subject matter or whatever, and just follow that person. You know, if they're big, if they're successful, their advice is probably pretty good. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But there is no such thing as perfection. Yeah, uh, it's better to take action and and I think just just follow one one or two people is a good idea. No, I, I think that's great advice. I, I, what I always say to people is keep seeking the mentor till you simply find the one that resonates with you, right? Because most of these successful, whether they're a business coach, a mentor, whatever they are, teachers, they say very similar things but in slightly different ways. And sometimes you have to hear the message three or four times. And then the fifth time you hear it slightly differently from someone else and you finally get it right. And the light bulb goes off. I mean, I, I know Juliet and I are huge believers in uh, business coaches and mentors, and we think everybody should, uh, you know, should have one mastermind group. And yet 100%. It, it, it's always fascinating to me that the people who resonate with me, it's completely different than the people who resonate with Juliet. And they say the same message, mm -hmm. but just it's a different person. And I don't quite frankly get who <laughs> she gets. And I know she doesn't get who I get. Definitely, yes. That's a, that's a very important point. You, you need to find somebody who you vibe with, somebody who, again, you shouldn't look for the best. You shouldn't look for perfection because there is no such thing. And this could be business. This could be fitness. This could be relationships. This could be spiritual. It, it can go in so many different directions. Don't look for the best. Look for somebody that you're like, I just, you get that gut feeling like you, you vibe with that person. If you, if you're listening to somebody's business advice, but you hate the sound of their voice for whatever reason, as silly as that may be, you're probably not going to take action because you just don't vibe with that person. Uh, again, for me, like, like Tim Ferriss, like I have no problem listening to him. He's, I feel like he's similar to me. I feel like the lifestyle that he wants is similar to me. So I vibe with that person, right. somebody who is looking to build billion dollar businesses and is extremely analytical and you know, not outgoing and things like that would probably not like his advice because it just wouldn't feel right. right. So find somebody who you just vibe with, who it just feels like I, I could, I could sit down and have a, a cup of, a cup of coffee with this person and, and not want to poke my eyes out. <laughs> yep. that, I think that's generally a good idea. What I found interesting as well is that you've mentioned the book Essentialism mm -hmm. and Steve loves the book Essentialism. And I remember when Steve read it, he said to me, he says, you have to read this book. <laughs> it's, it's a game changer. You have to read it. And at that time I was not reading books. I was doing them through audible. It would be my drives when I was in my car and so I downloaded Essentialism on Audible and I hated it. I couldn't get past like the first two chapters because I couldn't, I didn't enjoy listening his to his voice as he was reading the book to me. So just to add to that as well, sometimes the voice of the person is, is it's going to be the medium that you consume the, mm -hmm. the knowledge from as well, that I enjoyed the book, reading it myself. I did not enjoy it listening to, to Audible. 
So if you if you think someone has the right message, maybe reading it yourself will work, maybe listening to them read it. So think about that as well when you're trying to pick the voice that you're listening to. Yeah, no, that, that's a great point, Juliet. That's a great point. Well, the, the time has been flying by here, and that brings us to our point in the show that we call the smart man, smarter woman version of James Lipton's Q&A from the Actors Studio. And that's where you all know we ask our guests six questions, the same questions to every guest. And are you ready to be on the hot seat, Dylan? I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm, I'm right. sweating a little right. bit. So I'm breath, drink everyone. water here. Deep breath. There's no wrong answers. There's no wrong answers. No wrong answers. Okay. No, all right. Not I'm not being graded. All right. First question. What one word best defines an entrepreneur? Crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Uh, this has been something I've been thinking about a lot over the last probably two, two to three years. I would say probably public public service. I hate saying this word, a politician. I want to get into that. I think I think I want to get into politics. Okay, you're the first one to give that answer. I can tell you that. Definitely. (laughs) What profession would you like never to attempt? (laughs) Being a politician. (laughs) I'm going to say it is a dirty, nasty, gross profession. My desire for it is is probably more of a. I feel obligated. Okay. That is my answer. (laughs) Fair enough. What sound or noise do you love? Uh, The sound of my dog snoring. Okay. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, We have, we have two. Uh, We have a a lab, a lab boxer mix and, and and a beagle and uh, they both snore, but the lab, I mean, she's just like full on, she's a trucker. Like she just <laughs> full on lets it, lets the, lets the snoring go. And it's just, uh, no uh she typically sleeps with me. She's, she's like, she's my girl and, uh, she typically sleeps with me. So we're very much dog people. So as soon as you mentioned dog, I knew Juliet would throw this whole thing right off track. Well, and, uh, and also boxer, right? We're a boxer family. Yeah, yeah, we're so boxer. it's the boxer side. That's the snoring part. So. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what book to try to get us back on track here? Go for it, Steve. Uh, I'll be what quiet. book would you recommend every entrepreneur should read? Uh, I'm going to give two. The first would be Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, the second would be, would be Essentialism. Uh, and, and I would add, if lifestyle seems important to you, the idea of traveling while working, et cetera, et cetera, then uh, The 4-Hour Work Week by, by Timothy Ferris. Yeah, no, it's a great book. When your own entrepreneurial journey is completed, what do you hope your legacy is? How much time do I got to answer this? <laughs> 90 seconds. <laughs> 90 seconds. Boom. Okay. Uh, I used to think about legacy. It was, it was a term that I thought of and not, not, not that it was important to me, but, but I would think, what, what do I want my legacy to be? And then I heard somebody say, basically I came to the realization that 200 years from now, we're all going to be dust and our even if we change the world, nobody's going to remember us 200 years from now. So that really changed the perspective for me. And I realized that the meaning of life, in my opinion, is to take the luck, luck, excuse me, the luck that you were given, push it as far as you possibly can, run with it as far as you can, and then metaphorically speaking, sprinkle it around as best as you can you know, try to, you know, give more than what you took. And if that's giving the charity, if that's teaching, that's coaching, uh, that's leaving a large inheritance to your children, whatever. I really think that that is the, the meaning of life. So I don't necessarily think about legacy anymore. I think about how can I make the greatest impact I can to simply make the lives of others better whatever that is. Yeah. And if nobody remembers me a hundred years from now, because nobody will, that's okay. What matters is making the lives of, of other people better. 
Awesome. That is my answer. Yeah, no, it's a great answer. And uh, before we start winding down, for those listeners in the audience that would like to connect with you, what is the best way for them to do that, Dylan? Uh, sure. My website, uh, which is dylanogline.com, or you can find me on the the Facebooks, the Instagrams, uh, or the LinkedIn's at, uh, at Dylan Ogline. Perfect. And we will have uh, links to your website and all your social channels in the show notes when we uh, publish the episode. And before we conclude, uh, do you have any final thoughts you would like to share with our audience of entrepreneurs? Uh, no, I think we had a, a great conversation and uh, we we really hit home on, on a lot of stuff. Uh, and I hope people take away the important of I mean, the importance of focusing on the essential <laughs> focus on the essential and and re- recognize that uh, mentorship of some capacity is is extremely important i think if, if folks took away those two gold nuggets i think uh, i think it was a it was a positive episode so absolutely and what about you juliet uh, pretty much the same as dylan i think that there were so many so many things that came out of the conversation i uh, really enjoyed having you on the show uh, so thank you very much for joining us today, Dylan. Absolutely. Thanks for, so much for having me, guys. Yeah, that was great, Dylan. Thank you. And that brings us to this episode's words of wisdom. And so for this episode, I selected a uh, quote from uh, one of my mentors who I have never met uh, and is not alive, but has been a great mentor to me, and that's Zig Ziglar. And so the words of wisdom are, Lack of direction, not lack of time, is the problem. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. So I Perfect. thought that was... That was incredible. I, <laughs> I absolutely that love that quote. Fairly appropriate for today's episode. So anyway, in closing, again, thank you, Dylan. Thank you to my awesome co-host, Juliet. But most importantly, thank you to you, our audience, for tuning in and giving us a listen. We sincerely hope you found some value. And if you did, please feel free to subscribe to the uh, podcast. We will not complain about it at all. You can find us in all of the regular places. Also, the website is smartmansmarterwoman.com. So thank you. Until next time, take good care of yourself and those that you love. And bye for now.